e o mundo à independência de Angola. On the 11th of November 1975, after several centuries of struggle against the Portuguese, the first president of Angola, Dr. Agostinho Neto, declared independence. What's up, people? It's your girl, Adiola. Today we're talking about Angola, a very beautiful country in the southern part of Africa. Not just because their elections is coming up, but because Angola is one of the first African countries to start taking loans from China. They started with $2 billion from China. They said they wanted to use that to rebuild their country after the civil war that lasted for decades. But then, of course, China made it easy for them to borrow that $2 billion because they have no need to pay for several years. And so they decided to borrow more. More and more and more. In 1979, Augustinho Neto died. He was succeeded by the engineer Jose Eduardo dos Santos. By 2021, guys, Chinese state owned corporations had financed Angola to the tune of $60 billion. And if you're wondering why China was so interested in Angola, by the way, it's because Angola has oil. Since the discovery of oil in Angola, the vast majority of these loans from China were backed by oil. So the arrangement was we give you the loans in exchange for access to oil. So much so that at some point, Angola became China's main oil supplier, surpassing even Saudi Arabia. China is giving massive loans to Angola and getting access to oil and other natural resources in return. A lot of what I'm talking about, by the way, happened in the last 10 years and even beyond the last 10 years. And so I'll be using some videos just so you guys get some background information about these things that I'm talking about so that you understand why this coming election is very important. So to give you background information, not only did Chinese banks finance Angola's infrastructure projects with cheap oil-backed credits, but the Angolan government was also obliged, as part of the condition for giving them loans, to award 70% of the construction projects to Chinese companies chosen in Beijing. This means that Chinese companies in China were the ones awarded all the projects that China was trying to do in Angola, and not just that, they were bringing their own citizens for every aspect of the job, including the manual labor. The Chinese investment in Angola is not really generating first employment for the Angolans because uh, the Chinese are bringing their own laborers, you know, cheap labor from their own country. And secondly, you know, the type of agreement or funding that Angola is getting is not generating wealth for the Angolan people because all this money is going back to China. So many locals, so many Angolans who were ready to work were not employed simply because they were not Chinese. How many Chinese approximately you have here? At this moment, uh, around 300. Mm -hmm. But uh, for a, a normal construction speed, we need more than the double. In fact, some Angolans will tell you that they didn't do 70% as they said that they would, that they actually did 100% Chinese laborers. The Chinese came with their money, with their equipment, with everything that they did. They brought them to help, they brought them to the masters, electricians, canalizadores, pedreiros. Para os angolanos que dava para prestar o serviço de canalizador e de eletricidade já não há espaço. Não há espaço para trabalhar. When in school, we were always told that Angola was a very wealthy country with oil and diamonds. Now we see foreigners come in and take Angola's wealth instead of us getting opportunity or seeing the money. So it's like this big loan that China kept giving them in a way went back to their own citizens, I mean Chinese citizens, because they were the ones that were doing the work, so they were the ones that were making the money. So a lot of locals didn't see the benefit in terms of creating jobs. Now, not only were they bringing their own laborers, they also needed to eat their own food. And so farmers from China poured in in huge amount into Angola, buying land from the people of Angola to farm in order to now sell the produce to the Chinese people, but not just the Chinese people, they were also selling to the locals. It's lunchtime. Sabino tells me that Chinese laborers in Angola will only eat familiar food. Here, it's very hard to find rice, so we import rice from Thailand, from China. Chinese farmers are buying land all over the country to grow food for not only other Chinese, but for locals as well. 
So the Chinese farmers in China came into Angola, started making a living in Angola. I mean, they could have just told the farmers in Angola, we like this kind of food, rice and so on, you know, plant it for us and this is how to do it. But no, they had to bring in their own farmers. And it didn't end there. Of course, they had to bring in lots of made in China goods for them to consume, but not just that, to sell to the people of Angola. In the cities, there is an increasing number of Chinese shop owners selling Chinese made goods. <laughs> At some point, there are reports that there were over 300,000 Chinese people living in Angola. And they got really comfortable in Angola, you know, they married Angolans, had kids and all that while they were doing the work in Angola. Tive num casamento e encontramos lá um chinês com 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 um filho, o filho mestiço de um lado chinês e do outro angolano, já já casou aqui, já arranjou mulher, estão aqui a viver conosco. Quer dizer que a chinesa que já nem pensa regressar à China. Now the biggest problem is nobody could hold the Chinese companies accountable for the work that they were doing. I mean, even the laboring job, the Angolans were not there to testify on whether or not they were doing quality jobs. So Angolans had no way of knowing if the Chinese people were doing a good job or not until some of the buildings started having cracks. Luanda's General Hospital, donated and built by China. But it's now abandoned after major cracks opened in its walls. In Anukilamba, Já, já apresenta fendas graves, você dentro da casa a ver pelo estudo, através da parede, parede de todos lados, e são presos novos, de menos de um ano. The Angolan government had to spend millions of dollars to fix them. E aquilo que se diz que, que e, o barato custa caro, que está a custar mais caro as well. The airports that China said that they were going to construct, it's been more than 15 years and they are yet to finish, but they said that they will finish by next year. It's not that it won't look nice, of course it would, I'm just saying it has taken so long. And of course the Chinese people knew that they were not doing a quality job in Angola. They knew it. O fato é que nós estamos construindo montes de obras aqui. Eu não posso dizer que as, aqueles, uh, todas as obras são perfeitas. Nen, nenhuma empresa nenhum, de nenhum país pode, pode dizer isso. Ok. So not only that, so many locals complained about the new city that China was building at that time. So many people were complaining that they couldn't afford it. A jaw-dropping development outside of Luanda, Angola. Row after row of high-rises, 20,000 apartments. And that's just phase one. Entry-level apartments here run at $120,000 each. So I'm guessing that after people were complaining that oh, you are not doing quality job and so on, I'm guessing that the Chinese people made necessary changes. Angolans, I would like to hear from you guys. Is this true or not? Did the Chinese people decide to finally do quality job in Angola? Jaro and 85,000 other residents are living in Kalamba City. Since October 2012, the previously rural area has turned into a bustling satellite city, covering 8.8 .8 square kilometers with over 20,000 homes. Now, a lot of people would say, because of how nice Angola looks now, especially the capital Luanda, they will say it's all what is, that the end justifies the means. Let me know what you guys think about that. Over 95% of the houses are filled. We have 24 kindergartens, uh, 70 public schools, 9 primary and 8 secondary schools. We have a sewage treatment plant, we have two electrical substations, we have roads, info, telecommunication, landscape. All this infrastructure was done for the project. But let's not forget that they still have to pay China the billions of dollars that they had taken in loans. And most of this money was taken during the time of the former president, Jose Eduardo de Santos, who died recently. Remember, we talked about that. He was in power for 38 years. Rights groups accuse the government of rampant corruption, which the government denies and points to developments like Kilamba, 
It's an example of its commitment to the people. And of course, it was the same president whose daughter became the richest woman in Africa because her daddy put her in charge of the oil sector. So she was the one in charge of the oil sector. Just imagine the president's daughter. And of course, she wanted to be president after her dad, the nurse, I'm telling you. And it wasn't just his daughter. He also made his son the head of Angola Sovereign Wealth Fund. How convenient. And that's how one family enriched themselves at the expense of the people. So not only were they mismanaging these loans that they were taking from China, but they were also mismanaging the country's money. Now, after 38 years, the man literally picked his own successor. And that's the present president that they have. Now, I've seen a lot of people online that would say at least China helped to build Angola. That's something that the West did not do for them. And today it looks beautiful. But I think that we as Africans, if we take a look at Angola and China's relationship, I think we need to take caution in how we borrow money. I'm not saying that you shouldn't borrow money, but because soon they will need to meet the conditions of the debt. They would need to pay back this debt. And, you know, the Chinese people came, they've done what they were going to do. And many of them have left, especially now that the honeymoon phase is over. They don't have that many Chinese people as they used to have. I think now they have about 50,000, correct me if I'm wrong, people of Angola. But I just think that we need to talk about that. We need to use Angola as example so that we can learn. In fact, the Chinese people call it the Angolan model because they're trying to replicate that in other African countries. So when the new president came in though, knowing fully well that he was handpicked by Jose, many people believed that Jose would still be one in control. But in order to prove them wrong, he came in with the promise to fight corruption. And he actually had Jose's daughter and his son tried. So the daughter was prosecuted for embezzlement. Of course, she embezzled the money. That's how she became the richest woman in Africa. So today she's no longer the richest woman in Africa. And and then Jose's son allegedly transferred $500 million from the country's national account to an account in the UK, which people believe he owns or has access to. So then he was sentenced to five years in prison, although he only did seven months in prison. Later, several members of his own cabinet, the new president, several members of his cabinet were fingered in corruption allegations, and people were protesting that the president is not truly fighting corruption, that people close to him are now being fingered in corruption. Corruption cases. The trial of 49 military and state security agents prosecuted in a multi million dollars case for corruption, embezzlement, and abuse of power opened Tuesday in Angola. So people are wondering whether or not he's truly fighting corruption. Keep in mind, by the way, that his party has been the one in power in Angola for the last 46 years. And so it's really hard to defeat a party that has been in power for so long, which is why we're not surprised that all the opposition parties came together in coalition to form one party and they presented one candidate. His name is Aldabato Costa Jr. Now, needless to say, the opposition is complaining that the main party is trying to prevent them from having a fair election. In fact, they've decided to set up their own election monitoring platform during this coming election because they don't trust the main party. So, I'd like to hear from the people of Angola about this coming election. Of course, I'll keep updating people about what is happening, but I think that it's very important for us not just to curb corruption, but to also have a president that will would rethink the relationship with China to make it more beneficial for the people, for the locals, and a president that would go for loans that would be equally beneficial to both parties, not just to the lending party. Because right now, China gained a lot from Angola. I don't think the people of Angola gained as much as China did. So let me know what you guys think about this. And if your country is taking loans, how much has your country taken from China? <laughs> and are your leaders being accountable about this money? Finally, what do you think about China bringing their own laborers into African countries to work? We we'll keep you guys posted as they prepare for their election. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So did you guys click the thumbs up button yet? Like seriously, it's free. <laughs> Let's see if we can get up to 5,000 thumbs ups on this video. That would be wonderful. All right, y'all, it's been real. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my channel, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time, I'm going to see you later. Peace out.